My name is Herbig Baumgartner. I'm a, a principal of uh, at Baumgartner and UU, B plus U. Uh, we are based in Los Angeles and uh, we're an architecture firm uh, that is, um, um, I would say, focused uh, on, uh, on, on the one hand, on design research and, uh, and, and teaching, and on the other hand, uh, trying to build some uh, projects in LA and internationally. My name is uh, Scott Uriu, uh from the uh, firm Baumgartner and Uriu, uh also a partner uh, in, uh, with the firm. Um, uh, as Herbig has explained, we uh, base our practice on both an academic uh, focus, but also on a, a very uh, architectural focus on building in, in Los Angeles. My name is Jenny Sabin, and I am an architectural designer, researcher, and teacher. I'm based in Philadelphia, where I run an experimental design practice, and I'm also a professor of architecture at Cornell University, where I teach design studios and seminars with a focus on issues of digital fabrication, computation at the nexus of architecture, technology, and science. My name is Jose Sanchez. I'm the director of the Plethora Project. Uh, I teach both in UCL in London and now I'm migrating to USC in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm partners of Bloom Games, together with Elisa Andrasek, uh, where the project Bloom was uh, originated, and that's the project that we are exhibiting today uh, here in Prague. Uh, my background has to do with um, architecture and computation. Um, especially today, my research has to do with uh, the relation between architecture and video games. My name is Christina Schinicka. We uh, founded our practice uh, five years ago, uh, and um, for us, the name uh, Soma is also the gender. Um, we are, for us it has a double meaning. Um, Soma in Greek means body. So on one side, uh, of course for us the body um, as a, a sensing subject is always the center of architecture. And on the other hand, architecture for us itself becomes more and more like a body. It becomes responsive, uh, a living organism, and we're very interested in this interaction between architecture and the body. I'm Philippe Morel. Um, the name of uh, my office is Easy City Architecture and Design Research. It's an office I have created uh, in 2000 with Jelle Feringer and Felix Agit. We um, actually were um, involved uh, in architectural uh, design research from the very, very beginning. As I mean, by the way, uh, I created the office. I was still a student uh, in Paris. Now I'm teaching in Paris as an associate professor uh, at the École Nationale Supérieure d'Architecture Paris-Malaké. And I'm also teaching in London uh, at UCL Bartlett. I'm uh, uh, leading uh, a research cluster in the GAD uh, uh, course, I mean, uh, in the GAD program. I'm Roland Snooks. I'm an architect, um, one half of the experimental practice Kikuja, um that Rob and I established eight or nine years ago. Uh, Kikuja is it's experimental architecture practice, so it's not set up in order to, let's say, build buildings. It's set up to do a series of, of research exploration. Fundamentally, that is looking at um, extracting the underlying systems or algorithms from nature and looking at the way these can be recast as design generators, how we can design through those algorithms. I'm Rob Stewart-Smith, also co-founding partner of Kikuja. Um, we look at how we see design intent within built matter, so we're looking very much at how we can materialize architecture that has inbuilt into it agencies that come from desires and intent embedded within the code we write. Um, so we're looking for how to extend the agency of architecture beyond things like spatial or historical operandi to things like um, matter being programmed within time. My name is Stephen Ma, um, the founder of uh, Exuberance uh, from since 2010. And I was graduated from uh, SciArc, uh, Southern California Institute of Architecture, um, with the best graduate thesis uh, project. And um, my tutor was uh, Hanan Diaz Alonso. And then after that, um, I went to um, Coprima Blau in Vienna and worked for them as a design architect for four years. And right now, um, I moved to Hong Kong and my office are based in Shanghai, um, the office uh, called Luma. Um, we have an office in uh, Hongzhou 
Uh, and then we have another branch in Shanghai right now. Architecture for us is somewhat a, um, a combination uh, between design research and, uh, and practicing architecture and experimenting in a one-to-one in -one scale is, uh, is definitely always has been our goal and uh, it's uh, something our, our practice does. Architecture, which is a very big subject, encompasses the study, research, and practice of the culture of communication and form. And for me, broadly, that encompasses looking at intersections between architecture, technology, society, and science. A synthesis between uh, knowledge uh, and matter and, and resources, right? I would say that definitely knowledge and resources are the two things that are, are crucial. I really like a quote by Sylvia Levin saying that architecture is an empty vessel and it's everything we put in there. And I think that's precisely it. That's also, I think that explains why architecture changes over time and why there's no um, fixed truth or value to it. So what will define what is architecture is not the object in itself. It's how you speak about the object and how you are looking at the object. So in a sense, I strongly believe that architecture is something which is defined when you speak about something with the conceptual tools um, of the architect. Architecture is its an exploration. So part of our exploration is trying to understand why, a wider set of cultural um, and intellectual um, concerns within the world. And we use our architectural research as a way of trying to explore those things. And fundamentally, that's about exploring complexity theory and trying to understand what it is that leads to the formation of things in the world and then trying to understand those processes and reform those or recast those as architectural processes. For me, the architecture is uh, designed by sensibility and designed by um, with feelings and emotions. For us, it's, I guess, a twofold um, uh, problem uh, or, or, or interest that we have. Um, one is we have been working on the idea of aperture and opening uh, for a while. And uh, so for us, it has been important that uh, to develop a, a, an object, basically, aperture as, a, as a, not just as a window, as a flat cut out of a surface, but as an object that's being inserted in the larger mass and that transitions between inside and outside. Uh, and Tying into the topic of the exhibition, we have also been uh, looking at uh, a window, an aperture, as something that um, interacts with nature and has some sort of a feedback with with the environment. Yeah, and in this case, it's basically not only something that controls a light, but also kind of um, uh, is sensitive to wind and all kinds of other environmental forces and changes. Uh, not only the, 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 um, uh, on the, on the micro scale of the actual aperture, but it changes the appearance of the building as a whole. I might start with a series of visualization models where we're looking at novel behaviors and processes found in nature, which are then brought into scalable constructs through material constraints. So what might start out, for example, as a beautiful form cellular form may go through a series of abstractions and transformations to give rise to novel forms and structures, but also novel behaviors and expressions um, that may interact in real time with us and our human activity. Uh, the structure itself uh, is composed of a steel cable network that runs internal to all of the components that's under continuous tension. So it's a quite uh, laborious uh, installation process. So what started out as being a very sophisticated digital process then took on a number of analog steps. So as that steel network is brought into tension, all of the components begin to act in compression and form a rigid uh, surface structure or shell. And the entire form is held uh, in suspension within the turbulences. And if you look at Bloom, uh, the attempt of, of putting together a material system with a social system, uh, it's perhaps that very idea of, of allowing some sort of energy to, to basically organize itself and, and build patterns uh, out of noise, right? I think that um, you start with pieces that are absolutely 
disassemble or scattered. And then just by kind of putting them together in different ways, you start finding out that structure can emerge, that formations like that you could recognize as a spiral or a, or a, or a particular sequence, uh, appeals the eye and appeals to the, to the public in a different way in which just randomness doesn't, right? So the relation between the project and, and the exhibition, it's, it's, it's very literal. It's, it's how the process of, of material formation happens out of discrete units and how that process is a ever ending, uh, never ending, um, self-organizing system. The idea from the beginning was that we, um, would do a facade that would be, um, seamlessly moving, having no joints, um, and really would work through the material performance. And I think this approach is, is very new and it comes from, um, biomimicry and, so to say, science. So it also shows this connection of architecture uh, to other disciplines and how through interdisciplinary research, um, these, um, noble facades or noble ideas can emerge. Um, on the other hand, um, the building, of course, uh, plays a lot with, uh, with natural, um, motives, so to say, and that's what we really also like. That for us, nature is a, a rich and fertile ground. So, uh, it's not only, uh, we're not only scanning it for, so to say, technical solutions, but also for organizational ideas, spatial ideas, and also for the, um, the power of nature to, um, create and let, let evolve associations. Conceptually speaking, I'm, I was very much interested, uh, in some, uh, biological structural model. Uh, I mean, with, I, I was interested in the, in, in the amazing efficiency of some biological morphology at some point coming from, uh, natural, uh, spaces. But, so, I mean, this, this is the kind of conceptual, conceptual challenge for us. I mean, how can we transpose some of this model into architecture? I mean, into larger material experiment. And the second aspect of the project, I mean, concrete is the second largest, uh, used material in the world, actually. So, I mean, the first one is water. The second one is concrete, actually. So dealing with concrete means dealing with a completely global situation. So what we are presenting here is a kind of bio-inspired piece of structure. It's a prototype. Uh, we are making use of 3D printed sand. Uh, we choose to use 3D printed sand because uh, we strongly believe that uh, the economical model which is provided by polymer in uh, uh, in 3D printing in the 3D printing industry, the project we are presenting is a, is a merge between some traditional approaches of concrete and some highly innovative approaches which are based on first highly computational methodologies and tools. Actually, some of them, uh, some of the one we used are quite, I believe, quite difficult. So we've, we've, we're showing this through three projects. Um, one of them is a set of drawings, uh, and then there's two competition entries. One is for a museum and memorial in Kiev, and the other one is a competition entry for the National Art Museum of China. Yeah, so one of, one of our concerns is about the emergence of, of order, emergence of complex order. This, and this also comes from the principle of self-organization. These multi-agent systems are self-organizing systems, and what this means is they're inherently systemically open. It means you can keep adding properties or characteristics within there that play out. Uh, so, for instance, it's it's a negotiation. So self-organization is a negotiation principle, and it means that we can compress multiple design intent within a project. So we can be dealing with the pragmatics of architecture while we can be dealing with other aspirations, such as ornament or other types of effects that we desire that respond to cultural or social concerns or concerns of perception. No, I mean, so it's inherently systemically open. It's something which doesn't, um, doesn't require us to privilege certain hierarchies or to say one thing is dominant over another, but allows all these things to negotiate between themselves. It was the first project from Exuberance, um, the SciArc, uh, graduate thesis. It was developed, um, between 2006 to 2008. So the entire project, um, 
it's actually is about multiple systems that come together in a seamless way. Like so, you can have a lot of different variation that come into one single form. So it morphs into each other and it's trying to become one singular building with the aesthetics. The Taiwan Tower, which I start working at Kupimo Blau, um, and it's a different style compared to the thesis uh, style because um, that one is the opposite of um, opposite of the exuberance uh, work because that one it's about multiple systems that come together without um, merging. So it's about awkwardness and it's about um, things that they don't fit into each other, but then they create you know, one single point.